Hey everyone, let's go ahead and make a card today. In this video, we are going to be creating a really cute ghost card. I found this metal die set a while ago and I had to add it to my collection. So I went ahead and bought it, saving it for this time of year and I'm excited to create with it. So I am going to have some fun with pattern paper, I think, but let's play around with making a shaker card. I think this is going to be super cute. Okay, the first thing that I need to focus on is actually taking apart my little metal dies. I'm just using these little wire snips. They work really, really well. That way I can detach them. And I think I'm going to use the bigger of the ghost. As you can see, there are two ghost sizes and I'm gonna use the bigger one. I think that'll be really cute. Okay, and I'm also going to use this cute little face, I think, because that's all with the bigger one. All right. And it's really important that you take the time to actually take the little pieces off of your die because if you don't, it presses into your paper and it doesn't look too great. It's not the end of the world, but it's worth taking the time to really get these split apart really nicely and getting those little metal pieces trimmed nice and close. So for example, I'm going to make sure that this little piece is off and that way it doesn't press into my paper. Okay, we are all ready to go. So I think for this particular card, I'm going to use these elements. So what I have here is the actual ghost, right? And then I have the same thing, but this is kind of the outline. So this is going to help me build up my shaker. So let's go ahead and I think what I want to do is decide on a pattern paper. I was thinking, I've had this for a while, and I'll link everything that I'm using down below, but I was thinking it would be really neat to maybe focus on a really fun, non-traditional colored ghost. I'm kind of liking kind of these lime greens, and then the soft pinks, and this little beige color. So I think, I think that's what I'm going to do. You could also, it's fun, right? as you kind of shift this around, you could also change the, completely change the tone of the card by coming down here. I feel like these really have a lot of fall vibes where we have this nice brown, kind of an orangey color, and then we're getting into the pinks. But then of course, as you move up, you get a totally different kind of feel for the card here. It's kind of a little bit more playful. And then of course, everything just changes based on the color choice that you do. I think I'm going to do this. I think that's gonna be really fun. So with this die, I'm gonna cut out my paper just like that. I also really like this paper, so I'm going to be mindful to preserve as much of it as I can so I can use this for future cards. Okay, so there we go. Isn't that cute? So let me go ahead, make sure that's centered the way I like. I think I like that just like that. And I'm gonna run that through my die cut machine. I'm also going to grab some heavyweight cardstock in white and I'll run it through probably about four or five times on this piece. This is going to help us really build up the dimension of our card and that will allow us to create the shaker. So I'm gonna grab several little sheets of 130 pound cardstock. It's nice and thick and I'm gonna cut this out four times and I think that will be just right. Now I'm gonna make sure that I actually save as much of this as I can because it's such beautiful cardstock that I wanna make sure that I can save my scraps. All right, let's begin cutting all these pieces out. Okay, using my Platinum 6, I'll go ahead and begin cutting all of these little elements out. Okay, so here are our little elements that we have and I'm already thinking that we're going to be able to create a little bonus card. So these are the elements I'm going to be using, but the little inside of the ghost is super cute as well. So if we have some time, we'll make a little bonus card with this little piece or pieces. All right, and I also have a piece of acetate that I cut out of the same die as our pretty pattern paper. So what I will do is I'm gonna set one to the side with the acetate, but I'm gonna take the first three little surrounding pieces or outline pieces of the ghost and I'm gonna go ahead and glue those together. So I'm just going to grab this liquid glue, place it all the way oops, around my little ghost outline here and we are going to build 
a really thick kind of gate area for where we're going to be able to house all of our little sequins. So I'm just going to layer them one on top of the other. Again, I did four pieces of 130 pound cardstock. It's probably going to depend on the type of fill that you use as well. I'm using really, really thin fill, so I don't need mine to be, you know, really bulky in any way, but it does need to have some room for movement and filling inside. Okay, adding this next piece. So, so far I've layered three of these little outlined ghosts. And I'll just wiggle those into position. And then for the next piece, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my acetate. So three pieces, we'll add the acetate. Okay, I think that's the right direction. Place that acetate right on there. And then I like to save my final little piece for placing right on top of this acetate because as you can see, you're gonna see that glue, right? You see that? It's kind of hard to see because it's white and it's white on white, but you're going to want to cover that up. It doesn't look too amazing in person. So then on top of that, I will place one more layer of our little outline. Okay, got my glue. Put that into place and press that down. That looks really nice. I'm also going to grab a little stamp block just to help make sure I have some pressure on there and I can grab my little sequins wand a little much on the glue but it's not a problem I like to grab the pokey end of my sequins wand and I just went go and just really quickly swipe that glue off okay so now we have our little shaker window and it's nice and thick on the back, if you can see, so that we have enough room to put some little fill inside. Okay, so the fill that I want to use, and again, everything I'm using will be linked down below, but there are these really pretty little stars, and I just need to make sure I know which way this is going. I think like this, right? Okay, so I'm going to place these right on this piece. And I like these because they're nice and shiny, I think that's plenty but also because they are almost kind of a clear so we'll still get to see a lot of the color of the pattern paper below all right now I'm going to okay that goes that way I'm going to turn this around and I will add my glue so I'm going to add glue just around this perimeter because this is what's going to hold all of that shaker fill all those tiny little stars inside we're just going to close it up and make the shaker Okay, there we go. Turn this around and place. Okay. And then of course I can shift that into position being careful to kind of keep it flat until it's dry. That way those little pieces don't go near the edge and get stuck on that glue or try to escape. So we just want to make sure that's nice and flat. Okay, Wait a couple more seconds. Isn't that pretty so far? Really like that. All right, so then we have our shaker. Isn't that adorable? Look at those stars. Oh my goodness, they are so pretty. Okay, so now we need to add the little face. I think that's so cute. So here's our little face. I'm thinking we'll do it out of white. So I'm gonna grab just some white cardstock just some scrap cardstock. I think I will cut this out probably three times. I just wanna have a bunch of dimension on this so it's really sticking out nice on top of our shaker. And then let's start thinking about our sentiment. In fact, I can bring my little mini trimmer in. I am obsessed with it. I just find that it makes everything so much quicker. So I don't have to keep Pulling in my other one, it can just sit nice on my surface here. Okay. And in fact, I can bring in my little mini because these are just tiny little cuts. This is so easy to use that I just, I really prefer it when I have lots of little cuts to do. Okay, I'm gonna keep these pretty. 
wonder if I want to just do the eyes. Well, let's see here. Let me get an idea for what I'd like to do. The eyes are just super cute. Oh no, the little mouth is cute too. I think that's really fun. Okay, I'll go ahead and continue repeating that step again three times to make sure that I have enough to layer. Then we'll glue those together. Okay, there is my final little cut. And again, I have all of these continuing to stay organized. That way I can make it easier on myself. All right, again with the glue, but this time because these pieces are so small, I think I will also bring in my sequins wand. That will be very helpful. Let's see, not that side, but the stickier side. And let's go ahead and do all of our little right eyes. Bring those all together, whoops, there we go. Okay, let's add some glue. And then I'll just grab my top one, place it there, place it there. And then with all three connected, I can wiggle that right into position. Oops, I'm sorry. Oh, that looks really nice, nice and thick. Okay, there's one. And I will continue doing that for the rest of my little elements. Oh, it's, I think it wants to stick to the acetate. Sometimes that can kind of have a little cling to it. So let me know, do you make Halloween cards? I did not until, or I didn't even think about, I should phrase it like this, I didn't think about handing out Halloween cards until I started making cards. It wasn't really something I handed out cards for, but now it's kind of fun to put my own spin on it, if you will, and make it kind of cutesy cutesy. I don't like scary cards. I don't like scary Halloween either. In fact, my friend and I were just shopping today and we saw there was a bunch of Halloween stuff out and we were talking about that exact thing, about how we prefer the really kind of soft and cute Halloween to all of the scary stuff. I don't really like that kind of stuff. Okay, so give me all the cute little pumpkins and all of that, but anything other than that, not my thing. Okay, I think I might wait to put the face on until we figure out our sentiment because I don't want it to overlap or, you know, I don't want to regret where I put that. And of course the face is going to go up here, but I still want to make sure that I have my spacing just right. So here is my little boo. I thought it'd be cute for it to span just across the little shaker. And I'm not sure what I want to do for color. I'm kind of thinking we could layer some colors. So why don't we build the card up just to kind of get an idea for what it's going to look like. And then I think that will help us make the decision on the color for the sentiment. At least I think it'll help me. So I'm gonna grab my little score buddy and I'll grab 110 pound cardstock. This is sized at 11 by four and a quarter. And I'll place that score mark right at five and a half. That way I can create a top folding A2 size card and we can place our shaker right on top. Okay, now, should we place the shaker just right on here or should we make a little panel, maybe do some embossing fun? I'm trying to decide if I want to go kind of simple or if I want to have a little fun here. I'm kind of loving the idea of doing a little dot. I think it's something that's super simple but could be really pretty. So what I'll do is Right over here, I'll grab a panel that's A2 size, four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm just going to barely trim that down to four by five and a quarter. That way I have just a cute little margin and I'll make that just a tad bit smaller than my card base. Okay, I'll grab a little wet wipe and just make my paper a tad damp. And let's see. Place this right in the folder. Try to get it nice and straight in there. And I will go ahead and just run this through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 really quickly. And we'll give this a little embossed look. I think that's going to be really cute. Okay, running that through. And, oh, it's so simple, but it's just something more. 
I love that. I think that's really, really pretty. I think that's the right choice. Okay, so if I place this here and that on top, oh, it just gives it something more. I think it really softens it too. All right, let's grab some foam tape and put it on the back. I love a good foam tape for really just giving an embossed piece of paper more stability because it kind of weakens just a little bit. It can become a little bit flim flimsy after you do a little embossed technique on it. So this really helps just make it more rigid and I really like that. Okay, let's get these little strips off and we're making some progress on this card. I think this is so cute. Okay, we'll center this the best we can, just like that. Very cute. Oh, that's so soft. All right, so now I think I'll put my little ghost on. There's no rhyme or reason to where that's going, and I don't think that, I keep, I keep getting so confused at what this is. It's double-sided paper, but every time I turn it around, I'm, I'm just jarred. I'm expecting it to be just white. <laughs> okay, so let me decide. Do I want to bump this up off the card? That could be cute add a little bit more dimension or do I just want it to softly lay on the card like that? It really already has enough dimension as it is so I might just have it right on the card just like so. So let me grab my liquid glue. I'm just going to add a generous amount to the back here just like that. Okay and then place it right in the center there. Okay, now I think we're getting an idea for the feel of the card. We've got that nice embossed dot, and then we have just the pretty colors and that soft sequins. So I think we can, I think we can decide on a pretty color for the sentiment. What I'm thinking of is doing maybe lay a layer of pink and white. So I have a little piece of pink here. This is uh, pink lemonade. I had to think. This is Pink Lemonade by Concord 9th. And I think I'll cut that out. Let's play around with it. Let's do pink, white, and then let's also bring in some glitter. All right. Oh, it's so cute. I love this look. Okay, got all these little tiny pieces. Oh, it's so dainty and fun. Okay, so how cute okay but we're gonna do a little bit of kind of shadowing that way it really has some contrast so let's now add some white okay i was thinking of layering all three of these and i think that that would be a really fun choice so what i will do is i'm going to make the pink at the bottom so i will grab the white and just add some glue whoopsie there we go all around. I'm going to have to clean my mat. This is so delicate that it's bound to just be a sticky little mess for a minute, but it'll be just fine. Okay. There we go. And instead of layering it, I'm just going to kind of, kind of offset it. So, oh, this is going to be a little difficult. Okay. Let's do something like that. You just have to decide on a little offset and go with it. Okay. So I think something like that would be super cute. Do you see how it's kind of, oh, that was wants to shift. Hold on, let me get it there. Let me get it there. There we go. That's very cute. Okay, then I'll just add the gold to the top of that. Okay, and that is how that turned out. Isn't that neat? Look at my gluey fingers. Oh my goodness. So, grab that wet wipe and get all cleaned up. Let's go ahead and finish this up. This is super cute. I love the softness of it. Let's put these cute little eyes and the little mouth on there. Oops, a little sticky. <laughs> and then we can do our little sentiment. Oh, and I think that's really cute how that's going to kind of layer on top of that. Isn't that sweet? All right, so let's do, let's do something like that. Ooh, or even, well, no, I really like this kind of up. 
I think that's really pretty. So, I wonder if I can even bring this up just a tad more. I don't mind it interacting with the sentiment, but let's do that. Okay, I'm going to bring this piece up and I'm just gonna add, well, it's gonna be kind of hard to add it to the back. So I'm just going to kind of ballpark that. Whoops, it's not what I wanted to do, but if I can pick that up and kind of shift it up, there we go. No problem. All right, so let's try that a little bit more eloquently the second time. And that wiggles so much because it's on that acetate, which is like a little ice rink. There we go. So you just need to let that set. Okay, now I'm gonna nudge this that way. And I think that looks cute. Cute, cute, cute. All right, let's put this little cutie on. In fact, I might actually opt to do some foam squares on the back just to really bump that up. So what I think I'll do is I'll take these big foam squares and just really trim them down super thin. And I'll put them in some of these little spots, just, just a few. So maybe one here. And it's actually a great idea because it gives all of these little pieces just a tad bit more sturdiness. In fact, actually, I might need to take it off of there. I think it's gonna be a little bit more important on the acetate part. Let's do a couple more. Okay, I have those little backers taken off. I can just position that where I'd like it, and I think that's super cute. So I'll lay that down right there. Oh, that is so fun. How fun is that? I love it. Okay, I am not going to do anything else to this card. I love the simplicity, although while simple, there's a lot going on, right? We have a shaker, we have some stacked dies that have an offset, a beautiful, very subtle, but there little embossed look, which I really do think adds something. I really do think it helps soften the card and it gives the idea, again, it's just reinforcing the idea that that is a cutesy, cutesy Halloween card. All right, should we go ahead and make the bonus card? That would be really fun. Let's just do it. I know y'all love that. Okay, first and foremost, let's do our little stacks. What I think I'm going to do here to make this nice and fast is I'm going to do a tape runner. Now, the one thing about this is you have to get it lined up perfectly because with liquid glue, you have the wiggle room. With tape runner, it's kind of one and done. There's no wiggling involved. So just take your time, line that up, and you'll be good to go. Okay, so there is our little layered ghost. Isn't he cute? Okay, let's go ahead and I think I want to bring this striped paper back in and I will do so with a little die set. Oh, how cute. Okay, let's do, I'm going to do, that'll give plenty of room. We'll do this and I'll extend it up into this color because, oh, you know what? No, I'm going to bring it down. I like the addition of the orange. We'll do it just like that. So I'm gonna add just a tad bit of tape here and here, making sure my lines are nice and straight. And then what I'll do, oh, there's so much going on. Okay, then I will, then I will kind of trim around. Again, preserving this paper because it's just so pretty. So we will do another card base, same dimensions, 11 by four and a quarter with our score line right at five and a half. And then same addition of the foam tape right on the back of the panel. Get that nice raised look. And let's get that straight. That'll really help me. <laughs> And I did a bigger and wider margin this time. Isn't that pretty? I like that. Okay, and then our ghost will go right in the middle here. With a little liquid glue on the back. Just position that right in the middle. And there we go. Okay, I think for the little mouth, I'm going to grab Pebble by Concord and Ninth. I think that it is going to pair really well with this nice stripe there. And then again, it's just going to make this card nice and soft. And just like our first card, I'm going to stack these three layers high for some simple dimension. 
and there we go. Okay, you know what I think would be super fun is if we brought in a little banner. And I've had this set for a while now. I haven't used it. So I was thinking we could do... Um, actually, I really like the little pendant banner. I think that is so cute. And I also have the coordinating dies. So let's grab... Let's just grab and grab and go. So let's clean up just a tad. And I want to do some, I think some heat embossing. So bringing in my mini Misty, I'll also bring in that pink lemonade cardstock. And let's grab the little pennant. Where's that right here? Give it enough room for the die. Okay, I think that looks great. It doesn't need to be perfectly straight or anything because we're just going to we're just going to place them around and then we'll trim them out. All right, some anti-static powder. We will also do some Versamark. All right, let's see what we can do here. So there is our banner. I'm just a double stamper, it's my thing. I'm gonna give that one more. Okay. And what I'll do is I'm going to place this anti-static powder all the way around because I'm going to try to do all of my stamping right now and then I'll come back in and do all my letters. So let's do, oh, we need more room, more room than that for our dies. There we go. That looks good. And I think Versamark gives you quite a bit of time. Hopefully I didn't make that stamp. No, I think that's fine. I was wondering if I distorted it a little bit when I pulled it or placed it on there in that manner, but I think it looks great. Okay, so there's my little banners. I'm going to spell out boo. We'll do one here. Looks great. And I'm just putting them far apart because again, I'm going to cut them out with a die later. So we can't have them too close. Okay. And there. Okay, voila. Let's go ahead and add the letters. So, oh goodness gracious, you know what though? These letters are independent. Hmm. Or I'm sorry, these letters are all the same one. How in the world? Okay, I didn't I didn't anticipate that. So I figured I could have each one independent of one another. Let's get this heat embossed and then we'll worry about the next step. Okay, bringing in my catch paper and I'll also use a fine detail white powder and sprinkle that right over my little stamped designs. Oh, look at that. One has one right in the center. Isn't that silly? Oh my goodness, let's grab a little brush. <laughs> Just brush that right off. Okay. Okay, that should be good. Put my remaining powder right back into the canister and let's heat this up. Okay, there are my little pennants for my little banner. Now what I think I'll do is I'm trying to figure out how to get all of my little pieces. You know what I could do? I could, I really could trim them apart. Should I do that though? I don't think I should only because the coordinating die is just so good. So let's see how we're gonna do this. Let's bring in the misty. I'll get creative here. We can do this. And I'm going to, oh my lord, okay. Oh my goodness. Okay. I'm going to place my B 
right there, right? Can I do this? I think I can. Let's take this little one off, put it right back on. Okay, I think that looks good. Oof. And let's see if we can't. Let's add more of the anti-static. I think that is pretty solid in there. And we'll add our Versamark. Okay, we're going to have to do a mask around it so that we only do the B. Well, this is a labor of love, isn't it? A bonus card that turned into a tricky little experience. Okay, so let's get this good so that we don't have to do it twice. Let's ink that up really good. Take off the tape and press that down. Okay, and we're just going to one and done. Now, let's clean that off. It's that little B. Let's find where the O is. And I think it's here. Okay, so we can do, let's do this. Let's do that. And there we go. Okay, I'm going to get a new piece of tape because the other one has Versamark all over it. And I just don't want to get my fingers all sticky. So we'll mask the rest of this off. Again, we will one and done this. Get that's nice and inked up. there we're almost there I'm going to only and the only reason I'm cleaning it off is so that I don't accidentally transfer Versamark in the meantime now I might need to tilt my Misty this way to do the next one to give myself enough room so let's do this take this little guy off and place it here nope that's not gonna work um if we do this way. We are getting so creative here. Okay, I think that looks nice and straight. Okay. Okay. Now I'm not sure if I really should be letting my stamp fall off of the <laughs> misty door like that, but you know what? We're going for it this time. Just making up our own rules. Okay. Lots of Versa Mark. And our last one. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> Look, there's some around. Oh, it's smudged. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't take the tape off. Okay. You know what, I think we might make it. We might make it. I'll just try to rub some of that off. Okay, hopefully that kind of dries because mama doesn't want to redo that at all. All right, let's get some powder on there and then we'll just kind of mend that a little bit with, <laughs> that's what you get for going fast at the end. We'll mend it with our little brush. It's always the way it is at the very end, right? Just about got it. Okay, so what I will do is I will take my brush and I'm gonna just brush away all of the extra powder that's sticking to that Versamark. Not perfect on that last one, but I feel like when we bring in the beautiful little dye, and I say beautiful because I truly mean it. A coordinating dye is kind of my love language. But once we bring this in and trim that out, I don't think it's going to be as obvious. So let's add our little dye around our banner as best we can. Let's see, we'll 
do that. And I am going to run these through one by one. And what I mean by that is I'm going to go ahead and trim these apart only because I don't want the, if there's any kind of cut marks on my plate, I don't want that to ruin the other pieces as I continue to run it through. So I'll just cut them apart, let's trim this out. Okay, there's our first little piece. How cute. Okay, and I will repeat that for the other two letters. Okay, our last little one. All right, let's finish this up. Our little bonus card is turning out super cute. Oh, you know what? That one is totally crooked. I feel like that last one is just, it's its not meant to be at this point. It's just not, oh my goodness. Okay, let's get going. And we have our little eyes. Let's get these off and little mouth. Okay, and then we have a little boo banner. Kind of like so. We actually have a little bit of baker's twine that we could play around with to kind of bring this together. All right, I think I'm just gonna leave the elements kind of positioned just like that. That way I can glue them into place. So I like where these are. I really like the soft tones of this. It's really taking on a different look than the other card, but I appreciate that because again, we're just using our leftover pieces. There we go. And allowing more creativity to just kind of roll from there, right? Cutesy, cutesy. Now, what I can do is let's do, okay, I gotta put these in the right order. Let's turn these around. I'm gonna add a little bit of tape to the back, just a little bit, that's even too much. Just to position these, oops. Okay, there we go. And bring this one in. Make sure that it's the same alignment there. Okay, and if that tape runs over, I will trim it. But I want to get that piece on there. Okay, and then this one here. Again, making sure they have even spacing. That looks pretty good. Now, I'm going to turn this over. If I have any tape peeking out, I'm just going to trim and trim. Okay. Easy peasy, like it was never there. Okay, how sweet is that? I think that's super cute. And what I'll do is I think I'll put the little foam squares on the back. Okay, one, two, and three. And place these little guys on. Just a fun different idea. There we go. I want it to go something like that. One, two, and three. And then what I'll do with these little pieces is I like how they're interacting with the actual card base. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of glue there, okay? And I'm going to allow that to glue right there. I'm gonna let that set, do the same to the other side. And then once that's nice and dry, just take a moment, get that press in place. There we go. Now what I'll do is I'll just take my little fine detail scissors and I'll trim that off. Just like that. Okay. Very cute. I might even add just a little glue at the top just to keep those pieces from coming apart and I'm just gonna dab it on there. Also just adds a little glue from the top as well. 
Okay, I'm just rounding it out with a couple little shiny iridescent sequins because I think that just looks so cute. Let me nudge this up a little bit, like how that falls onto that striped panel. But there we go. Okay, so our bonus card from our original card. I think those are really fun. Two very different cards, two very different kind of techniques and take on them, but I think they're both super cute in their own little respect. I hope this was fun to watch. I hope this gave you some inspiration in one way or another. I really enjoyed bringing this together and I was really having fun getting my scraps in use right away. Sometimes I see my little scraps and I put them to the side, but do we ever really go back and use them? Yes, but sometimes not in a quick manner like we think we will. So I hope this was fun for you to watch. Please be sure to give this a thumbs up if you did enjoy watching. Let me know which one was your favorite card. I definitely think the shaker card is my favorite. It's so, so cute, but I love this one as well. So fun. All right, everyone. I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.